Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to my fourth video of my video log series. In this video we'll be filling up the loop, something very exciting and something a lot of people like to see. So we'll first go ahead and start by looking at what coolant we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to be using the Mayhem's Ultra Pure Water. We're going to have to premix this liquid because we are going to use the Mayhem's Pastel Blueberry. So you can see here, and this calls for a premix. So you have to add about 750 milliliters of distilled water to the premix to create a one liter of uh, premix, basically. Um, I do have some deep blue dye there as well, and that's optional. I don't know if I'm going to use that. Um, if I like the color straight out of the bottle, then I'm just going to use that. So looking at the computer, I've put paper towels everywhere. It's just a precaution. You don't have to do this, but I like to do this just because if there's some accidental leak somewhere in the system, I don't want it going over any of my critical components. I have uh, paper towels over the GPUs and uh, some of the other, and especially the power supply area, um, just in case uh, you know we do have a leak. Um, but again, that's optional. You don't have to do that. Okay, and now we're ready to start making our premix. So what we'll do is grab the Mayhem's Pastel Blueberry. We'll give it a couple shakes, and uh, we'll start pouring it in this little bottle container I got. Now, I was walking into Target, and I just happened to come across this clear container, and I thought this would be perfect to uh, mix your liquids in. It's uh, very clear. Uh, it holds about one liter of fluid, or over one liter of fluid, so it should be plenty uh, to hold most fluid um, that you'll need for your filling up your system. And just makes it a whole lot easier. So uh, we'll just go ahead and start f pouring our uh, blueberry inside this container. As you can see, I really like this f color already. I don't think I'll be adding any blue dye, but I told my friend, hey, might as well just pick up a bottle just in case. Um, you know. So now what we'll do is go ahead and grab our uh, one liter of distilled water, and we'll start pouring this into the container. And this will create our one liter of premix. It's always good to start filling it up slow just in case you don't get any splashes out of the container. And here we have our one liter of premixed blueberry pastel. We'll go ahead and shake it up a little bit just to stir the uh, the uh, pastel with the distilled water. So once we're, we're done mixing it, we're, we're ready to put it in our system. Now to put it in the system, I like to use this syringe right here. Now I bought this at Target. I also bought the little tubing from a hardware store and I just kind of fit it right on the end there and it makes a really good like nozzle so we could direct the flow right into the reservoir. Okay, we're ready for the fun and exciting part. We're ready to start filling the system so what we'll do is just put the end of the tubing inside our little container holding the fluid. Go ahead and bring that and just drop that right into the reservoir. This is the, f the cool thing I liked about the tube is it's very simple to maneuver and very easy to direct where you want your liquid to go. And then just start pushing the fluid out into the reservoir. We'll go ahead and start filling up the left side of the reservoir first. I mean the uh, tubing first. Now it doesn't matter what side you put it on. But we're just going to go ahead and fast forward some of this because it can be a little tedious. Um, I do like filling up the system slow um, compared to just rushing through this part because um, you always want to make sure you don't have any leaks as you're filling up the system you know you see the fluid going down to the uh, pump at this point and what I'm doing is, is I'm really looking for any leaks um, n near the fitting now most of the time if you're gonna have a leak the leaks gonna occur where you actually have the fitting screwed into your uh, part so you know if the fittings into your block or your reservoir or your pump that's usually where it's gonna leak the most because of the o-ring on there um, now it can actually leak also where the fitting uh, attaches to any other extension or adapter it could also leak there so that's where I usually check I usually click check all those critical comp components and just make sure everything's not leaking okay I thought I'd show you guys the back of the tubing since you can't really see it from the front side and you can see a lot of it's filled up already we have the a lot of the fluid going into the pump and it's actually coming out the top of the pump and actually going through the radiator and coming out the back of the tubing there. So we have a lot of it full here already. Um, I just want to give you guys a look. You see it already going up the back there. So a lot of the uh, bottom part's full, and that's good because it's priming the pump right now. Um, the fluid's going inside the pump. It's going all the way back up to the reservoir. So we know that there's a lot of fluid in there already. So now what we'll do is just continue to fill our reservoir. Now it's not quite full yet to turn on our pump. Um, what we want to do, what I usually do, is I wait till it's about three quarters of the way full until I first turn on the pump. Um, that way I'm 
I have quite a bit of fluid there for the pump to circulate through the loop so it doesn't suck just air and that's really bad you don't want it to suck any air so we'll go ahead and continue to fill it till it's about three quarters of the way now I don't like to fill it all the way up because I have the top open and uh, if the pump turns on you know sometimes the power of the pump can be very powerful when it sucks that liquid down it creates like a big splash and I don't want any of the fluid to come out of the top and go all over our motherboard and that would be really bad so so what I'll do is just stop at about three quarters of the way and it looks like we're almost there so we can go ahead and turn on our pump so now we're ready to turn on the pump for the first time just go on the back of the power supply hit the switch and it'll take about a second for the pump to kick in Oh man, that was fast. Okay, so I can tell you right now this pump's gonna gonna have a high rate of flow in this loop um, just by what just happened. But what you want to do now is basically just check around, make sure there's no leaks again anywhere where your fittings are going into something. Um, so what I'm gonna do is check the back. I got my light on to see what see uh, see the fittings and the fluid back there. Make sure there's no leaks at all in the system. Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys also a good way to kind of measure how your flow rate is going as far as you know if you don't have a flow um, meter or anything like that it's a very easy way to tell um, if you have a tube reservoir as well and uh, we'll go ahead and just keep filling it up and we'll go ahead and cycle the pump again once we have enough fluid in the reservoir but first I kinda like to give you a little tour first um, you can see this is just after the first time we turn on the pump see it's still not completely full whatsoever to cycle the uh, pump on but we can go ahead and just give you a little tour around. Um, see a lot of the fluid. You see a lot of bubbles in the loop. Now that's normal. Uh, it's going to take about a couple days for these bubbles to disappear out of the loop. But for now, uh, they're going to stay there, and that's okay. Okay, so I thought I'd skip the fill process and just take you right to the part where we're about to turn on the pump for the second time. Now we can see we have the fluid in the reservoir about three quarters of the way. We're going to go ahead and just flick the switch once again. And as you can see, it's going to stop sucking fluid from the reservoir, and it's going to just continually, continuously cycle that fluid through the loop. Now, at this point, um, you can obviously leave the pump on if you wish. Um, but what I'm going to do is turn it off, check for leaks, and uh, go ahead and fill the reservoir up some more, uh, just in case you know there's some air bubbles in there and it takes some more fluid away. But what I'd like to mention is the part where you see the fluid going back into the reservoir. You can see is creating like a big like a big fountain and I can tell you right now um, with the fluid coming in that quick uh, we got good flow especially with all the blocks that we're using and the radiators using and that's just a way that I like to measure the flow rate for the loop so that's basically it what I'm gonna do now is just continue to fill the reservoir all the way up to the top um, it's good enough now to where it will continuously cycle the fluid through and we'll just continue to continue to leave the pump on now I like to leave the pump on overnight for about you know 12 hours or so uh, just bleed air out and uh, what you also want to do is tip the case back and forth while the pumps on to uh, relieve any air bubbles that are trapped inside the radiators um, that's always a good way to just make sure that there's no uh, air bubbles left now the bleed out process will take some time you know you won't you'll probably still see some bubbles you know a couple days later even and the whole process could take up to a week to fully get rid of all the bubbles inside the loop. Um, and now even especially the micro bubbles, you'll see these little teeny bubbles on the bottom of your tubing trapped there. Now those will disappear just over time. Just leave the pump on and it will do its job and uh, take the air bubbles away. And that basically sums up the fill process for this build. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really hope you guys got something from this, especially if you're a first timer and you're, you know, filling up your loop for the first time. I hope this, you know, gives you a lot more confidence. It's very, you know, it's not very difficult whatsoever. You just got to make sure you got no leaks and, um, you know, you're, you're watching your loop carefully. That's the big, most important thing. Um, for me, I've never had a problem with leaks. So, you know, as long as you tighten them, your fittings tight enough, but not over tighten. Uh, you should have no problems there. So once again, I'd like to thank you, all you guys for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe, share, like, favorite. 
do all that good stuff it helps me out now one last thing that I like to mention that I've never mentioned before is what do you guys want to see out of my videos you know am I doing a good enough job do you guys want to see more do you guys want me to go more in depth do you want me to go less in depth you know what do you guys like to see because you guys are the one watching my videos and I make these videos for you guys for you to help you out and stuff and uh, you know I really want to make sure I'm covering you know the most that I can for you guys you know I probably don't spend the amount of time that I should in post-production to make these videos really good it's just because I'm really busy with other things but I'm more than happy to take more time making the videos better if that's what you guys want so please leave a comment in the comment section below and stay tuned for my next and upcoming videos thank you guys bye